Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how Shopify is using Apache Jude to solve a specific problem, the slowly changing star schema type 1 dimensions problem. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jian Bingchen. I am currently a senior data developer at the Shopify anal uh, streaming analytics team. In the past two years, we have been building our new streaming analytics platform. One of our most recent work is to build the new sales model in the new platform. Let's talk about the background. Shopify is one of the most popular e-commerce platforms over the world in the past few years. We provide online retailers with a suite of services, including payments, marketing, shipping, and customer, customer engagement tools. These tools will greatly reduce the hurdle of starting an online business for both small and large merchants. In the right diagram, Shopify's merchants have been growing super fast in the past few years. We had uh, 500,000 merchants in August 2017, and the number just doubled in October 2019. In August this year, we just announced that our platform is powering more than 1.7 million businesses. This is really awesome. Along with the growth of our merchants, we are facing some changes in our analytics platform. Uh, these analytics platforms support our merchants' analytics dashboards. In the past, Shopify's analytics platform was powered with in-house analytical storage and a serving layer. It worked very well with lower volume and lower canality data. However, as Shopify's merchants and their shops were growing in the past few years, we gradually started to feel the performance changer in our platform. First, the slowly query response time for very large shops is a big changer for us. It is especially a problem for some of the top sales merchants. These top sales merchants contribute a lot of GMV for us. This is especially a big problem during the flash sale events over BFCM. BFCM here means Black Friday and Cyber Monday. This is the biggest flash sale season for Shopify in a year. Data inconsistency is another changer. It is bad for user experiences. It will also result in engineering hours spent on fixing them. In order to solve these changes, at the beginning of 2020, we decided to re-architect our streaming analytics platform. One part of the big picture is to explore some uh, open source OLP solutions, and uh, Apache Jude is one of them. And finally, Jude is the one we uh, selected to go into the production. If you are familiar with e-commerce, you should be very familiar with the concept of sales. Sales are the events or activities of selling products or services to clients. Usually money is involved in the sales event. Sales model provides a bunch of metrics for merchants to track their essential business KPIs, including total sales, total orders, gross profit, net quantity, and other key metrics per set of dimensions, for example, channels or countries. It is one of the largest models in Shopify. There are various types of dimensions. This talk will only involve type 0 and type 1 dimensions. The concepts of these two types of dimensions are straightforward. Type 0 dimensions value never changes. Type 1 dimensions value is changeable. And the type 1 dimension always returns the most recent value. So no, histor no history is uh, retained. Here is an example sales event. In this table, we have type zero dimensions. Their values are not changeable. Metrics, our queries do some aggregations against the metrics. Type one dimensions, the values are changeable and could be removed. In this basic query, it sums up the amount as total sales. It is grouped by the lo location name field, which is a type 1 dimension. This query returns total sales by location name to merchants. So the total sales in Los Angeles South is 250. 
let's use uh, this sales event as an example to explain why this model is problematic. When the merchants move all their sales from Los Angeles South to Los Angeles North, they will simply update the location name in the system. And if we have modeled all the columns to be denormalized in a single table, our think pipeline will have to restate all the facts related to this location, even though no real change to facts data. This is fine for smaller shops that have only a little sales in this location. However, in some edge cases, when the merchants have more than 500,000 sales in Los Angeles South warehouse, and they update the location name in the system, we will have to restate all the 500,000 fax rows from Los Angeles South to Los Angeles North. Due to these restatements of facts, there will be a burst of events from the Flink pipeline into Kafka, and finally, all the way through into our storage layer. We can handle it by scaling up our system, uh, but it is suboptimal and uh, not really worth the resources. So we have been working on uh, some smarter ways to solve this problem. The proposed solution is building star schema type 1 dimensions. If we build the warehouse locations dimension as a star schema type 1 dimensions, we simply split the facts and the dimensions into two tables. We only need to update uh, the dimension row uh, when the merchants update uh, uh, the location name in the system, and uh, we need to join the two tables during query time. In this query, when, when we join the facts and the dimensions data sources on the foreign key, the query result is the same as earlier, 250 in Los Angeles South. In our sales model, type 1 dimensions are different from facts in a few ways. Type 1 dimensions are mutable and can tolerate a lower freshness, uh, for instance, one hour or a few hours of delay. More importantly, Dimensions contain personal, personally identifiable information, PI data. This means we have to remove PI sensitive data per the requests from merchants. Finally, we want to reduce the amount of restatements in fact. Let's take a closer look at the data sources. Facts are dimensions are different types of data. So these differences require us to build them in different ways. Facts and the facts are immutable and the near real time data. Uh, the, fa the freshness of facts are usually under minutes. We build all the facts in Apache Flink. There, there are different types of facts, including recent data. This is append only real time data, non recent data. That includes later arriving data and the historical data. Uh, that is the backfield data uh, for all history. We build all the type 1 dimensions in Spark, and uh, uh, the dimensions build job and load job run every one hour. Now we are clear about the problem and the difference between facts and type 1 dimensions. We are going to talk about a few approaches we explored to solve the problem. Jude Lookups is an experimental feature that replaces the dimension keys with dimension values in joint like queries. The dimension federation happens in the memory of Jude broker, so it is super fast, which also means that the lookup tables must be able to fit into the memory of broker, so the size of lookup tables are kept by the hardware. And also Jude lookups support only single column values. If your dimensions have multiple columns, this solution doesn't work. The Jude lookups keys and the values columns must be string types. If you have some other types of columns in your dimensions like uh, integer or long, do the lookup uh, also doesn't work. Maha Jude lookup is a Jude extension provided by Yahoo. It extends Jude with the ability to connect to MongoDB, RocksDB, and other JDBC databases. This extension attracted our attention because it supports much larger dimensions in size than native Jude lookups. And also, it supports high cardinality dimensions, which is important for our use cases. Mahajuda lookups supports multiple value dimensions, uh, which means we can have multiple columns in the value. While this sounded like uh, what we were looking for, 
Mahajuda Lukas have very limited documentation and community support, which made the further development and debugging difficult. This configuration is not very flexible. For instance, the extension port the Rocks DB is snapshot from HDFS daily. This means the freshness of the dimension data is one day. In the worst case, the data will not be consumed for 24 hours. In our use cases, we cannot uh, really tolerate uh, such a long delay in dimension freshness. The extension is developed based on JUDA 0.17, which is not up to date. Uh, we need uh, the, some features and bug fixes from the latest version of JUDA. Our front end does not send the JUDA native queries or JUDA circle to JUDA cluster directly. We have an abstraction layer to translate the circle queries to uh, JUDA native queries. We thought about building our own joins in the abstraction layer. The left hand side of joins is the JUDA table, and the right hand side is the big table. Big table supports upsource, and it also supports range queries, high throughput, and high canality dimensions. However, this customer implementation of the joins in abstraction layer is pretty complicated. It's not easy to implement the push up or push down predicates. Finally, to the joins. This is the solution we are using now. To the join is a relatively new feature introduced by to the 0.18. This feature allows you to do circle-like joins of two data sources, and you can join arbitrarily many data sources by nesting multiple levels of joins. We found this feature to be extremely useful for building some uh, slowly changing start schema type one dimensions. To the join is implemented with the broadcast hash join algorithm. It is executed in broker nodes. Um, so when Judah receives a join query, broker will flatten the queries to a few sub queries and execute the sub queries in parallel, then load the results of sub queries into the memory of broker. And finally, build an in memory hash table for aggregations and filtering. The base data source is the fact data source on the left hand side, and the leaf data sources are the uh, type 1 dimensions on the right hand side of the join. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for us to choose this solution. First, this is uh, officially supported by the Judah community, which means that we can expect a better documentation, performance improvement, bug fixing, all these are very important for us. A second thing is that this feature supports the type of dimension we want. Mod uh, multiple columns in the dimensions, different types of column fields, not only string, but also in integer and long. And also, uh, through the joins, uh, we will not sacrifice a lot of query performance based on our performance testing, just a little, and it is totally acceptable for us. And uh, there are many more reasons for us to use through the joins. However, this solution is not perfect. There are a few limitations. The first limitation is uh, to the join doesn't support a push up or push down predicates. This means that you have to be very careful when you are writing join queries, especially be careful about the locations of your aggregations and the filtering in your query. To the join doesn't support upsource. All the data in Jude is persisted in immutable segments. You can attach later arriving data by creating new segments, but you cannot uh, modify an existing row in the segments. For our type 1 dimensions, the data are all, are all upt updatable and removable. The third limitation is uh, the limited number of rows from all sub queries per query. Because Judah join is implemented with the broadcast hash join algorithm, Judah needs to load the results of sub queries into the memory, and hence the rows involved in sub queries are limited. The default limitation is 100,000 rows. This can be increased, uh, but it, it has its cost as well. The last limitation is about query performance. We did some performance tests with the dimensions of different canality. We found that uh, the query response time does not increase linearly with the dimension canality. So this is a diagram. Uh, so we internally decided to not use the joint joints for high canality dimensions like addresses and customers. To make to the joins work perfectly for our type 1 dimensions, 
we made some optimizations to the data sources and the queries. First, let's look at an example of pushdown predicates supported by Judah. This query has a sub-query that counts the number of rows aggregated by location ID and the shop ID, and filters the results by shop ID in the outer layer. However, in this way, this query is written, it is not super efficient because the shop ID filters is applied after the aggregation, as we expect the final results to only contain the data with the shop ID 100. The inside query is aggregated for all shops in the data sources, and this is wasteful. Judah comes to the rescue in this case by doing some optimizations to the query. It pushes down the filter condition to the sub-query from the out layer, out layer. So the new query will look like this. It has a filter condition inside the query. And furthermore, Judah will actively ignore the outer layer because no filters or other conditions happen in the outer layer. The outer layer is useless. Judah will only run the inner layer query and uh, return the results. Let's take a look at a, a more complex example. This, this query left joins to sub-queries. The left-hand side of the join is a sub-query that aggregates total discounts by location ID and shop ID. The right-hand side of the join is a sub-query that simply returns the ID, location name, and shop ID from the location data source. The two sub-queries are joined by location ID, which is the foreign key. We have filters by shop ID in the outer layer, and we are expecting that Judah can push down the filter condition into the sub-queries. However, Judah cannot do it because we get the resource limit exceeded error. Our sub-query results exceed the default max sub-query rows configuration. This pushdown predicate is not supported by Judah joins. A solution is to write the filters inside the sub-queries. We have filter conditions in both left left hand side sub-query and the right hand side sub-query. This works in some scenarios, but not all. When location ID and the location name are one-on-one -on -one mapping, this join query works fine because joins are only doing dimension federation during query time. However, when the location ID and the location name are n to one mapping, this query result e, uh, results in duplicate rows from the same location name as we aggregate by location ID in the left-hand side sub-query. Let's take a look at uh, this join example. We have more than one location ID mapping to the same location name, and the results do not merge all the discounts from the Los Angeles South. This means that the result will have to further group, grouped and aggregated to merge the discount from the same location. Now, I will talk about the solution for the duplicates problem. The query looks a bit more complicated. It joins two sub-queries and has filters in both left-hand side and right-hand side. The key part is that in the out layer, it further sums up the total discounts and returns the final results to users. What if we want to return the average discounts per location name to users? Could we simply do average aggregation in both inside and outside of the join? The answer is no. Let's take a look at this example. The average aggregation result in the left-hand side sub-query is 20 for location 11 and 80 for location 12. When this average aggregation is applied in the outer layer, the average discounts are 50. This is an incorrect, incorrect result. So here is the correct query for average discounts per location name. The left hand left hand side sub-query sums up the total discounts and the total count. The outer layer query further sums up the total discounts and the total count and calculates the average discounts per location name. So in the left hand side, the total discounts are 40 for location 11 and 80 for location 12, and the total discounts are 2 for location 11 and 1 for location 12. 
In the outer layer, the sum of total discounts per location name is 120. The sum of total discount total count is 3. And we divide 120 by 3 and return the final compute, uh, computed average discount as 40. This is correct. And this query is also supported by Jude. In this way, we are sacrificing a bit query performance by computing the average aggregation with sum and count. But it, it is totally acceptable in the interest of correctness. So far, I have talked about the joint query optimizations. Now I will talk uh, about other constraints to the to the way we build, store, and serve type one dimensions. Our requirements uh, are that uh, as some type one dimensions have uh, personal ident identifiable information, we need to support the removal of PI for regulatory reason. In addition, type one dimensions need to be updatable. As Jude data is stored in immutable segment files, Jude doesn't support the upsource we need. In order to solve this, we build the dimensions in batch flows in Spark and out output it to G GCS Google Cloud Storage. Then load the output of the batch flows to Jude every one hour. A side effect of this is that we only have the hourly data refreshness of type 1 dimensions. As the load job submits native batch ingesting to Jude, it will overwrite the same data source on each road and uh, uh, replace all the segments atomically. Then we use the kill tasks to periodically clean up the unused segments in deep storage, as the unused segments contain PI data. As I said before, facts and dimensions are built in different ways. Facts are built in Apache Flink. Dimensions are built in Spark. So there will definitely be the cases that the facts and dimensions are out of sync. If the fact data is in the system, uh, but the dimensions are uh, not in the system. So in this case, we will up, we will use the press holder in the abstraction layer if the dimension value is now. The dimension value will be automatically updated after the dimension being rebuilt. However, if the dimension value is hard deleted from upstream, we don't have a way to distinguish between missing value or hard deleted value. We are thinking of solving it by uh, soft deletion, which means uh, redacting the PI sensitive data but uh, leaving the entries in the dimensions. The default limitation of sub query results is 100 rows. This is configurable. Um, we are just uh, using the default value and uh, doing some other optimization to overcome the limitations. First, we we do the uh, repetition of all the dimensions that sources by shop ID during ingestion time and uh, rep doing the repetition of real time time indexed uh, that sources from Kafka using Airflow DAX. All the queries and the sub queries are filtered by shop ID. This means all, the, all our queries are happening within one shop. We don't have any use cases of cross shop queries. This will greatly reduce the amount of data loaded into the memory of broker. We do the aggregation in the leftmost subquery to boost the query performance. This is also pretty important for query performance. If a dimension doesn't contain a shop ID field, we will join the dimension with another dataset to add a shop ID to the dimension. In our previous slides, we found that query response time deteriorates along with the increase of dimension canality, uh, and this. The query, uh, query performance decrease is not a linear. We don't find a good solution for the high canality dimension in Jude. Uh, so finally, we decided to denormalize the high canality dimensions as type zero dimensions in Flink flows. Uh, if you have any good ideas about resolving the high canality dimensions as type one dimensions in Jude, feel free to share with us. We found that the default monitors are not enough for our use cases. We created some additional metrics and alarms to monitor the dimensions in production. For instance, we have the metrics to track dimensions freshness. We have the metrics to track a key or task status. 
We are also tracking the amount of unused segments in deep, deep storage. We have the matrix of maximum canality of dimensions values in one shot. Also the matrix to track the loader tasks execution. So uh, we are really looking forward uh, to some of the new features from Jude community for the Jude joints, including uh, new join algorithm other than the broadcast hash join algorithm. Currently, Jude joins is implemented with hash join algorithm, uh, which means that uh, all the subquery result uh, has to be loaded into the memory, and uh, uh, the size of the subquery is limited. Supporting uh, push up or push down of predicates. So this feature will allow us to write uh, more flexible joints. We are we are also looking for the support of joints of high canality dimensions. Any question? Thank you very much.